Hi. How are you guys? Great. Doing well. Uh, can you introduce yourself? Uh, I'm Ilan. I'm an Israeli Jewish atheist. Um, I was always an atheist. I guess I was more secular, but atheism has become a big part of my life in the last year and a half since my daughter was born, really. I just decided that I want this country to be a better country for her. Oh. So, and I think that's the way to go. Oh. Uh, I'm Ben, an Israeli Jewish atheist. Okay. Though, uh, unlike Ilan, I actually grew up in a very traditional uh, household until about a year ago I still kept the kosher laws, you know, and until only five years ago I stopped believing in the existence of a God. Um, and nowadays, this is probably the, the biggest I idea that I think that we should promote in our society. Why? Because here in Israel, especially here in Israel, it seems that the that religious discussion is taking over every other discussion, be it education, be it security, be it politics, be it anything else. It seems that, be it values, be it anything we should be talking about how we create and how we manage all these aspects of our lives without the need for a belief mm. in supernatural fantasies. Mm. I think I'd even go a step further and say that I, I really believe that if there was no religion, if we weren't Jewish or Muslim or Christians, we wouldn't need an army in Israel, right? The army takes... The, the reason that our sons and daughters uh, go to wars and die is because of the, the core of it is because of religion, right? This land is ours. No, it's ours. We want it. We want it. War, right? If there was no religion, we would not need to go to the army. So for me, that's a good enough reason to stop this. So I will get back to that, whether the conflict is a religious conflict or not, because I've been asking that question a lot, a lot here when, um, in Tel Aviv and also in Palestine when I was, where I was two days ago. Um, but before I do that, um, can you both answer this? Are are you so you you're both atheists, right? But are you a Jew? That's a tricky question. Um, <laughs> I am a Jew because my parents are Jews. Are you a Jew? Yes, I am a Jew because I have a shared history with anyone else who is a Jew, in my opinion. All right. Can I? For any practical purposes, right. I am not a Jew. So I don't necessarily. Uh, consider my history that interesting. I mean, history is interesting, generally speaking, but not ju the Jewish history isn't more interesting than any other people's history. Um, th yeah, so the only reason I consider myself a Jew is because I was born Jewish. What does it mean to be a Jew? So my answer is the same. I, for me, it so means it, being born a Jew. So it's a blood thing. It's an ethnicity thing. I don't want to say blood because that sort of puts us on a different rabbit hole that we can go down. Um, but it's, so I say it's not blood. To me, you can define yourself as a Jew, right? In as far as I'm concerned, if you want to be Jewish, if you Armin now declare that you want to be a Jew, right. to me you are a Jew. Okay, but if I tell you that I believe in God, but I want to identify as an atheist. You think that's ridiculous, right? Like, right, that's a contradiction. That's a contradiction. Um, and if I say, I don't believe in God, I don't think Muhammad was the prophet of anything, uh, but I identify as a Muslim, you're like, yeah, that doesn't make sense, right? So what is it, so I don't, so if you guys don't, are atheists, what is it that makes you guys a, a Jew? So if it's not blood, he, is it what he, he said, is it a culture? Is it like if it's your parents and that's why you're a Jew, so you're, t you're talking about ethnicity. If, it, if it's not that, then what are you talking about? Then I guess if, if ethnicity is my parents being... So that's why I was trying to avoid the blood thing, right? It's not, right. It's, not blood, it's more of these are my parents, they are Jewish, I am Jewish. If they were anything else, I'd be that. It's not a, mm. it's not a matter of, um, reli of, of, of um, tradition or culture or history. It's not culture. For me, it isn't. For me, it is. But for you, it is culture. For me, it is. For me, it is a shared, um, in a sense, it's a shared history. Mm. Um, the fact that the reason you can be a Jew and be an atheist, you can say, proudly say, I don't believe in God, but I'm still a Jew, mm. is the fact that you are, in the end, the result of years of a certain form of education, a certain society, a certain organization of society. Mm. Um, it's exactly this. It's our shared history that makes me a Jew. So I cannot believe in God and still be a Jew. 
But how is it that when you are an ex-Muslim, you have that shared history with Muslim, you had that sh you know, went through that culture, but when you leave it, you're no longer a Muslim. So why is it so? Why is it with Judaism that the Jew, being a Jew stays? I'll tell, I'll tell you why. Because our state is too young. It's it's a matter of semantics. I think it's language. The, the things that it's, the, it's what we use. Our state is too young to be able to for us to be able to say. I mean, I mean, now we might be on like on the on the edge, the the the, the tip right. of the balance. Um, we're too young to say that if you like, if you. We are Israel. He's a, a, a Muslim can say, "I'm not a, like I don't believe in God, so I'm not a Muslim." But he is an Arab from any other Arab country. What does it mean to say Israel is around seventy years old? What does it mean to say that you are Israel? It didn't mean anything in thirty, forty years ago. It barely meant anything. Nowadays, it means a little bit more because Israel meant Jew immediately. And nowadays, we're coming to a point where it might not. But okay, but Israel is a new thing. It is. So your definition of a Jew is also a new thing, yeah? Because we didn't have the Israel before. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. You're getting Correct. it. It's exactly that. You couldn't say that before. You couldn't say that if you don't believe it. Like, maybe back in the day, if you say you don't believe in God, then maybe maybe you couldn't be Jewish. I don't know. Because it, and then, where would, where would it leave you? Right. Well, according, as far as, I'm in, as far as I know, according to Judaism, you cannot... Un undrew yourself, right? You can't just say, exactly. I'm now not a Jew anymore. And this exactly. has nothing to do with Israel, right? This is Yeah, exactly. but they also say there's a God, so what do they know? Right, I agree, <laughs> I agree, yeah. I agree, yeah. But, okay, but so it seems, okay, so it seems like there's four, uh, four definition of, based on all, you know, my time in Israel and I asked, talking to a lot of people, I found four definitions of what it means to be a Jew and they, they're not very related with each other and the fourth one is the newest one. First one, it's a religion, Second one, it's a culture. Third one is an ethnicity. And this last new one, apparently, is being Israeli. Um, if it is that, do you think that Arab Israeli citizens are Jewish? <laughs> if they yeah. want to be. Uh, yeah, well, well, yeah, essentially, I, I, because I say that Judaism <laughs> is a form of shared history, then, you know, essentially, Arab Israelis, given enough time, you might be able to say that they are Jewish. I mean, because they're in the the the, the Jewish state, right? Right. And we have a shared history together here in this <laughs> in this Jewish state, and it, they are citizens of this Jewish state. So, I find it very hard to separate those th first three ones. The last one is a bit different, but tradition, history, and religion, pretty much, the core of it is belief in God, right? If you didn't believe in God, or originally the people who started it didn't mm -hmm. believe in God the history and culture would not be considered Jewish, right? Right. So once you detach yourself from those three, there's not much left. So that's, that, that to me, you can't say I'm a Jew because just for the culture. To me, that's, that's uh, sort of, that's weird. Right. So, so given that, that means that if you think if you take out the religion, then you're not Jewish anymore. Based right. on what you're so saying. that's what I, I said before. For any yeah. practical purpose, practical. I'm not Jewish. Yeah, I mean, t t so you guys disagree on this. Yeah, yeah. And given that so many Israelis uh, disagree on this, does it mean anything anymore to be a Jew? Because you don't have a consistent definition of it. Like it seems like if it could mean anything to anybody, then it doesn't really mean anything at all. Well, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna forward this question to to Elan and ask if he if. If he meets uh, a Jew anywhere, like any, any, not in Israel, if you if you're traveling Europe and then you you meet someone who says he's a Jew, wouldn't you get that uh, tingling feeling of familiarity? I don't know if you like this answer. When I travel, I try to stay as far away from <laughs> Jews, Israeli, definitely Israeli. Um, but yeah, I mean, like I I just like to learn about other cultures. So uh, of course you get that sense of familiarity, just like you would if. Uh, you know, if you met uh, someone who's in your uh, chess class, right? Someone who you have something in common with, then you'll get that feeling. But it's not based on anything other than that something in common. So. I w I'll ask you something. Right? So you're an atheist, right? Yeah. Would, if you were traveling somewhere else, right? Let's like say you were traveling in Egypt. If somebody came to you and said they are Jewish, would you get more that tingly feeling? Or if some Arab... Uh, came to you from Egypt and said they are atheist. Wow, um, <laughs> it's a, it's a really good question. I think I would probably. It's it's a bit hard for me to be uh, 
that objective when when it's when we're talking about Arab states. In my, in my mind, it's, it's it's pretty tough to be an atheist in the Arab state. So I, I'd ha- I'd sympathize with yeah. the atheist uh, Egyptian. Um, but but let, let, let's let's take it somewhere else, not not to Egypt. Let's take it somewhere. Where, I mean, United States. If someone were to tell me that he's an atheist, right. United States or or Jew, in the United States, I think the Jew would still give me. Really? A more tingling <laughs> sense. I think my conversation with the atheist would be much more interesting. Because it would be interesting, but I'm saying the feeling of familiarity, that mm. we belong to the same in-group, it would be stronger with a Jew than with the atheist for me. I, I think, but I would think that uh, things that people choose says more about them than things that they didn't choose, right? So if somebody is an atheist, they had a say in it, so... I, I don't agree with that. No? No. Why? I think you can't choose what you believe. Or you don't believe, right? Well, I mean, so technically, I didn't can't choose, choose to not believe. I just can't believe. I, I, okay, but you can't force me to believe. I, it's yeah. like I, I, I want to believe. I have a million dollars. I don't. Right. Okay. Well, technically, you can't choose anything. Right. So there is no free will. But there's a line that we cross. <laughs> that's say, a rabbit hole. Yeah. 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 That's, <laughs> but there's, there, for the sake of argument, because even though, I mean, there's a difference between. So if you pull a gun on me and ask me for my wallet, I had no choice. To give it to you but even if you don't pull a gun on me and i just donate it to you i didn't have a choice either but we have to come up with the difference between those right. two. an yeah, efficient yeah. way of speaking yeah yes, yeah okay so i mean i understand what you're saying but i'm just saying that uh, people's view of uh, values and ideas says more about them than uh, than something than anything else right so i mean if somebody agrees somebody says like i believe in free speech i'm an atheist um, I'm from. I was born in Iran, right? So, but I think. But somebody that is not born in Iran and says they're an atheist and believe in free speech, they believe in liberal values. I feel like, oh, I have a lot in common with you. But if somebody says I'm from Iran, I like, okay. That's a great example. You're you're Iranian, right? Right. We're in Israel now. You shouldn't. Right, we shouldn't be having this conversation if that's really what we cared about. Right. But the fact that I can be your friend, right? I feel like I could be your friend much more than a a and ultra orthodox. Jew that lives right next to the, the or town next Iranian, to me here, yeah. or religious Iranian, or right? yeah, yeah, exactly. So I exactly. think we have more. In, I have more in common with you guys than most people in Iran because Absolutely. yeah. So that's why I don't. I don't get that sense. Like that, I don't get that tingly feeling if I meet a fellow Iranian. So I probably will run away like you. No, no, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, so 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 we need to di- differentiate between yeah. between my uh, uh, cognitions and my feelings, right? So right. I would appreciate the atheist for being one. It's not something. It's not easy. Um, not not all people get there naturally. Some are born into religious families, and then it's really hard to get out. Um, and, and you yourself came from a very liberal family, and then you went into the yeah. The I faith. became very religious. You became very religious, and then you again. yeah, and then and then you yeah. you exited the religion again. But it's just a matter of this sense of familiarity. I think it just has to do with mm. me growing up in a very Jewish household. Right. It'd be a sense of nostalgia. It would remind me of my young my childhood myself. But but can't you get that without being Jewish? Like I, for example, I don't. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm from Iran, right? I don't see any sense of pride or anything in that. But I still, when I f- eat Iranian food, I get nostalgia. I don't have to be proud of my where I was born to get enjoy the nostalgia that I get from eating Persian <coughs> food. Exactly. Right. I agree with you on that one. Okay. Uh, that doesn't mean I'm, uh, I have to be proud. I'm not proud right. of this person for right. being a Jew. Right. Uh, it just gives you that feeling. Just a feeling. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Um, I, I could talk about this forever, but I want to get to the next question. Um, one thing that we, as atheists, we do is we criticize, uh, um, anti-theist atheists, what we do, we criticize religion a lot, right? Um, I mean, as an ex- a, lot of, you know, a lot of people were, uh, in Western countries get more criticized for, you know, get more attacked for criticizing Islam than I do because they're like, apparently being an ex-Muslim for some people gives you a license to criticize Islam. And I don't think it's, I I don't think, (coughs) I don't think it's fair. Like even, like, for example, I go give speeches and some people come and say, like, I I, I agree with everything you say against Islam, but I'm white, so I'd rather you talk about it. I'm like, what do you mean? If, If something is wrong, everybody should be able to say it's wrong, right? But now that I'm now that we're trying to attack different religion, when it gets to Judaism, people are like, oh no 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 no, you don't don't go there, okay? Like this is um, you're feeding into anti-Semitic uh, views, uh, criticizing um, Judaism, uh, <coughs> plays their plays their narratives. You're feeding their hatred. Uh, 
don't you know Judaism is a small religion there's not that many of them so don't attack Judaism what do you guys think about that so I think that that's what's important to be um, anti-theistic uh, if, if you if you want to be if you, if you are an anti-theist across the board right uh, th that, that is the definition of anti-semitism to me uh, saying saying things and criticizing Israel isn't bad. Saying things and criti criticizing Judaism isn't bad in itself. But it, when it becomes the sole criticism mm. that you have, out of all religions you criticize only Juda uh, Judaism, mm. or out of all nations in the world you criticize only Israel, then it, that is when it becomes, in a sense, anti-Semitic. A cover. Exactly. A cover, like you have a different, <coughs> it seems, it looks like you have a different intention. Exactly. Here, exactly. Right, when you're, okay. But so, so your answer is that as long as you have been attacking uh, Islam, Christianity, and Hinduism, There's then no nobody problem. should think that you're anti-Semitic if you also do Judaism. Exactly. Yeah. What do you think? I think the term anti-Semitic is um, mostly addressed to people right. who are Jews. But right. there is a fine line between criticizing people mm. and criticizing ideas mm. and, and a religion, basically. I think it's okay to criticize Judaism and even only Judaism if you want to. Mm. It doesn't mean the people who are Jews are bad people. So anti-Semitism is, to me, very um, right. very related to, I don't know, maybe aggression and, and uh, violence against people. And, and the ideas behind, you know, it's just because they have these ideas. And not against ideas. Exactly, and not against the ideas themselves. Right, but people say that, yeah, they are, like, if you attack Judaism, I mean, like, I'm not, I'm not attacking group of people I'm attacking these ideas and their right. ideas are wrong and that's why I'm attacking them but that should be fine yeah but yeah but they say like people say that yeah I, I mean I understand that you're doing this but the consequences of your what you're doing is more harmful than beneficial right because a lot of people use these of, of, of attacks on Judaism as a as a tool to to communicate hatred towards a certain group of people right that's and where that, the fine line becomes yeah, but even if you don't do it, they will use what you're saying right. to, hate, to to promote hatred to a certain group of people. What would you say to that? That's a big problem. If uh -huh. someone criticizes an idea, and someone, it's, it's like you could take that out of religion. You could say, I'm criticizing capitalism now. Right. And then some crazy guy would say, from now on, I'm going and killing every capitalist that I know, every person who thinks that capitalism is good. Right. So what can you do? I mean, so yeah. you won't promote your... Right, right, idea, right. right. So you, you, know only, I mean? you could only be responsible for the things that you are... Yeah. It's it's the it's kind of the easy way out, but yeah. it's the only you can't control what crazy people will do with what you say, right? I mean, it's well, what, how about there's two there's there's two um, ways I think you could uh, do that, and you tell me if this is a good solution. One is to constantly remind people <laughs> that that you're not attacking a group Absolutely. of people. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, and that you're against anybody that does that. Like, you constantly, like for example, one thing I've done is that I have complimented my uh, attacks on uh, Judaism, but also going after um, attacking anti-Semitic people. Like, you know, if you are attacking Judaism, for example, you could also go out find, <laughs> tell people why anti-Semitic views are, like go, find, go attack Holocaust deniers, right? Uh, if you're attacking Islam, also stand for the rights of Mus uh, oppressed Muslims at the same time. Like one thing we do at Atheist Republic is that we're constantly attacking China for the way that they treat Muslims. Even though we're constantly attacking Islam, we're also attacking China for the mis their mistreatment of Muslims. That's the one way. Another way is uh, to, hide, like for example with Islam, the way people have um, promoted ex-Muslims to show that look, even people from there uh, that are not hateful to birds, their brothers and sisters, um, you know, they're against Islam. How about like highlighting people like you guys that are atheists, um, you know, Jewish or ex-Jewish, whatever. Um, so you, you, that, would you think that would be a good strategy by highlighting atheist Jews? Yeah, I mean, obviously. It's yeah, a good idea. It is a, it is a good okay, idea. I don't know if it solves, again, I don't know if it nails that crazy person on the street that decides that he'll do what he wants to do, right? It's It's not... Even when you criticize China for the way they treat Muslims, China doesn't care, right? It's not like they're... It's not about ch changing China. It's about the people that are watching your channel and they come to your channel because they think you're anti-Islamic to get that anti-Muslim fuel. And they're like, oh, wow, these people can be anti-Islam and not anti-Muslim. Well, you change minds like that a little bit, so, you know, one by I one. I agree, yeah. 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 All right. But, okay, by the way, given that I'm going to mention promoting you guys, what, what is your channel, YouTube channel? So, uh, <clears throat> sorry. 
our uh, YouTube cha YouTube channel. Let's do that again, maybe. Go ahead. <coughs> I'm sorry, my throat is a bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So our YouTube channel is going to be. Um, well, I'll talk about why we started it at all. Um, we felt that there wasn't enough. <laughs> so, so <laughs> start again. Um, so, uh, as we only have like seven minutes left on okay, okay. Uh, there, so we'll just uh, get through it fast. Tell me, tell me your YouTube channel and the main channel, the main struggles that you deal with on your YouTube channel okay, in right, Israel. Fine. Yeah. So, yeah. So, our do you want want me to tell the the name of the channel in Hebrew, just like. Yeah, name of channel, Albert. Hebrew, right, yeah. and yeah. also the main struggle, the main thing. Right. Yeah. So our channel is called um, Hadeist Hamatsui, mm -hmm. or in the translation, the common common layman, everyday atheist. Mm -hmm. um, and what we want to talk about, what we want to really um, make people be more aware of, uh, unlike in the United States and in English in general, there are there are a lot of channels um, like Drew's channel, the mm. uh, modif uh, genetically Gentry, modified yeah. uh, skeptic, yeah. that. Talk about religion and talk about the, the the statements that religion makes and why they're untrue, and why atheism um, is a more rational uh, position to to have. Um, here in Israel, we don't have enough enough of these channels. We, there are a few, none that that do it as well, and none in Hebrew. Mm. Um, so our, our main struggle is really to give the, the the correct answers, the correct information. To encourage the this discussion of these topics in Hebrew and about Judaism, most of the attacks are on Christianity and, and Islam because they're the more popular uh, religions. No one talks about um, Judaism as much. So we try in our channel to really pinpoint the 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 the, the very specific things that gets that gets Israelis going. Mm. Uh, also, in Israel, there's a bit of a problem with. Um even even though you're free to talk about anything you want, right? We're in this room now having this podcast and it's okay. No one will prosecute us. <clears throat> but people, generally speaking, even secular people, don't go out saying that they're atheist. You don't mm. hear that very often. Um, they can be completely, you know, completely secular. They won't keep kosher. They will not, you know, maintain the Sabbath. But when you ask them, do you believe in God? They'll... You know, it's it's yeah. sometimes will be yes, and even and if you say, do you not believe in God? Then they won't say ath the word atheist isn't really out here, mm. um, and we're trying to get it out. To we're trying to make to normalize it to get people out of the closet, I guess, right, <laughs> of the the atheist closet, mm. um, to make them feel that they belong to a community, just like you had in Iran. You felt alone, yeah, and people here, I think, also do. Well, you're doing your Lord's work. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. <laughs> right. Yeah, thank you guys. Thank uh, you. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. We Thank wrap you. it up. Oh, that was really good. <laughs> Atheists are under attack in many places. If they were Christians, their voices would be heard. If they were Jews, their voices would be heard. If they were Muslims, their voices would be heard. But they are atheists, and not many seem to be listening. Let's make it difficult for them to ignore us. We have built a global community, and now we are tearing down geographic, cultural, and language barriers so we can find each other and support each other. In the last decade, we have built the largest atheist community in the world. Now we are doing the same in other languages. With your help, we have started Atheist Republic in Persian and Arabic. انضميت مؤخرا لأسرة Atheist Republic وحيصير عندي بودكاست باللغة العربية. As we grow, we can dedicate more time, staff, and resources to start doing the same in Spanish, Portuguese, Malay, Bengali, Urdu, Hindi, and other languages. We are providing community, support, informative content, and amplifying the voices of those who need protection, especially in countries where people feel isolated simply for their lack of belief. We want to be there for them, and we are only getting started. Help us get there. Check in the description for ways you can support our projects.